Hey friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Sarah Watts. I'm gonna show you my five, Ooh, I really wanted to pick way more. I'm turning it into a series because I couldn't pick just five for everything, right? But if I were stranded on an island with sloths and a good water source and vegetables, what, what would be in my art supplies bag, right? So today's video of the series of deserted island art supplies must-haves <laughs> um, is about drawing utensils. So <sighs> I narrowed it down to five drawing utensils, assuming I already have a sketchbook. And I'll share with you my favorite sketchbook as well. Okay, so let's check them out. We're gonna go through my top five favorite drawing pens of all time, drawing utensils, tools, sticks. <laughs> um, but the sketchbook that I wanted to share with you is the, it's the handbook and it's by Speedball, the company that makes um, lots of different screen printing inks. Uh, they have a sketchbook called Handbook Journal and the Handbook Journal. Handbook Journal. Called the Handbook Journal. They're amazing and this sketchbook, I love all kinds of different sketchbooks, but this is the one that I go to when I don't know what to pick. It's my, my comfort zone sketchbook, right? And uh, they also have a watercolor paper version that's great too. So this is one of my favorites because I love the paper. I also love this adorable format. Get this, a square format, best format of a sketchbook ever. And for me, the reason is, is because you can do you can do a landscape, so you've got this landscape view. You also have the option of doing a vertical portrait view, and you can also just do a square, a square format. So what's nice too is if you're standing and drawing, it's so easy to hold. You just kind of look at it. It's not like hitting the person next to me in line or you know, a dog's not able to jump up and grab it out of my hands because it's just so giant. I don't know if either of those scenarios would happen, but it's just really easy to hold in your hands. So the other thing that I love about this book is the pocket. Uh, you gotta get a sketchbook with a pocket. I mean, it's the best because not only can you stick little things in there that you find along the way, like maybe you find a cool little piece of paper that you wanna use for collage later. My favorite thing about having a pocket is they have, there's different companies making um, sheets of watercolor paper like literal pieces of paper with watercolor pigment on it. So technically you could put those in your sketchbook in this pocket and bring one water brush with you and then you have a full watercolor setup. And it's only with, I mean, imagine if you got one with a, a loop on it that held your pen. Seriously, awesome. Okay, so my first art supplies is the Blackwing Pearl pencil. I love all of the Blackwing pencils. Um, I get the pearl because the lead's a little bit softer. So there you go. The other awesome thing about these Blackwings is this eraser. So it's not only is it an awesome like paddle kind of shape, so you can go in and erase tiny little details or you can use this side and really get a larger space of your drawing erased. Um, but what's really cool about this eraser that not a lot of people know about is you could pull it out and when it gets worn down, you can pull it out and make it longer and then put this piece back into the back of the pencil. And now you've got a larger eraser to work with again. And they're beautiful. Like, look at this pencil. But that is my pencil for if I had drawing, only could only pick some drawing utensils. All right, so my second favorite must-have uh, drawing utensil is the Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen. I prefer the soft tip. Um, these are awesome. What's cool about them is you can get a very fine line, right? Mm, look at that fine line. And then you can just tilt it a little bit and then you're like, whoa, look at all that versatility in this amazing little brush pen. Another nice thing is that this one's good for tiny little details. So you don't have as long of a um, brush tip on it, 
So it gives you more options for fine detail. And you know, I can just go in there, like if I'm drawing one of the sloths on my island, I can um, put in lots of tiny little hair details, you know. A little bit of that. And then I can also, you know, put in some broader strokes. But you have, you have a lot of options with this pen because it's, uh, you know, you've got a fine line option and then you have a thicker line option and you also have the option of doing calligraphy because one of the first things that you'll wanna do on this island by yourself is do some awesome hand lettering. Uh, that's another great thing about this pen is that because you can easily tilt it to the side, you can do some really cool modern calligraphy um, in case you wanted to have a party and invite all of your new uh, island animal friends like iguanas, uh, lizards, snakes, um, maybe the fish, then you'll be able to make a really awesome sign so they know what your party's all about. Um, so again, I just started learning how to do modern calligraphy, so I'm not a pro yet. But I can write my name. Yeah. Ooh, doing this as a lefty is something else. Cool. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the third drawing utensil that I could not live without. Okay, so my third favorite art supply Drawing utensil, tool, stick. Um, you ready? It is the Pentel Feud Pocket Brush. Amazing, luxurious, beautiful. I've been using this thing for like, I don't know, 15 years. Like as soon as I got my hands on one, I haven't stopped using it. It's amazing. The reason I love it is because this brush pen has actual bristles and it has a flow of ink coming out of it that you can control by squeezing the cartridge. What? Yeah, seriously, awesome, right? So this one is more of a gestural wrist movement kind of um, brush pen, and it allows you to get big broad strokes and also tiny little detail strokes. So, you know, you can get your, and let me just squeeze out a little bit of that ink. You'll have to find some kind of little palette to you know, get the flow going a little bit. And, okay. And then I can also let some dry brush magic happen, right? So you can like scrub the, the side of your brush a little bit. And then you can also What beautiful thick and thin lines, unless you've had too much caffeine. Maybe you visited a caffeination station. <laughs> okay, so this is a great brush pen. So you'll just, you know, you can find a palette to kind of get the ink flowing and you can dip it, either one. but it'll allow you to get some beautiful thick and thin lines, right? So like if we wanted to do
Okay, I got carried away. Anyway, lots of options for a Pentel Feud brush pen. They are very versatile and can give you a lot of wide range in uh, line weight. And the other cool thing is if you add water, you know, if you find a little palette, you can add water to this black ink and get some really nice washes. So pretty awesome. All right, so for the fourth drawing supply that I cannot live without on my stranded island scenario, um, I'm choosing the Tombow dual brush pen. Hmm? Awesome. These are amazing. Now, ideally in this scenario, I would have every single color that they have of these, but I'd hope that I'd at least have three. These are awesome because not only do they have two, um, you know, they have two tips. So you've got this uh, blunt tip. It's kind of like a, um, a felt tip that has a consistent line weight. Rut row, my drawing is still wet. Okay, let's go over here. It has a consistent line weight. But what I love about having a consistent line weight is that I can keep my hand pressed up against my sketchbook and quickly record something without having to think about the control of my hand um, and the weight of my, you know, my thick and thin lines. I could just draw it real quick and then come back in later and add a little bit of depth to the line weight if I choose to. Now, you wanna see the other side because it's pretty amazing. So then you have the other side, which is a brush, uh, brush tip. It's a felt tip pen as well. So unlike this one that has bristles, this one has a felt tip, much like its other friend um, in the Tombow family, the Furunosuke, which was our first choice uh, as far as the pens go. And um, this one has a longer felt tip pin. So you can, as, as soon as you start adding pressure, you start to get lots of line weight options. And then if I really went, uh, you know, parallel to the paper, look at that. What? Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Um, so you can imagine. And then you could come in with your And then you could even go to this side. Right? Like, seriously? I mean, I love it. Uh, there's a few other hidden gems in the Tombow dual brush pen. One of them is that these act as watercolor markers as well. So you can find a palette uh, and draw on that palette. It needs to be something like glass or like laminate or plastic, something that will, or anything with like a good coating where the marker won't absorb into the surface. And what you do is you, uh, you know, draw on the palette and then you would add water to it to turn it into a watercolor. I mean, it's pretty awesome. So if you had like four of these with you, you would not only have, you know, the dual brush, which would mean you have eight tools with you, but you'd also have four watercolor options because you could turn them into little watercolor pigment palettes. A little bit of that. <laughs> okay, and so in order to show you the way that the uh, watercolor part works, I have to introduce you to my fifth and final awesome drawing utensil that I could not live without if I only got to choose five, right? Okay, and so that final fifth art supply for drawing would be the water brush. This is a Tombow water brush, but lots of different brands make them. They're really, really cool. They come in different shapes. You can get like a flat tip, you can get um, a smaller brush, you can get a bigger brush. And the way that water brushes work is that you fill up the cartridge with water. So if I were to unscrew this, there, this is open and I can pour water in there, right? Close it up. And I can use this as a paintbrush. So if you don't have a bowl of water sitting next to you while you're drawing, you can use a water brush to get that same effect. So here I am going to go into my little palette of the Tombow dual brush that I created. And I can use that as a watercolor wash. And I'm squeezing water as I go to get a little bit more um, of a lighter wash. But check this out. You're noticing as I scrub across the existing line art of the dual brush, it's also reconstituting that pigment. 
so that it's becoming a watercolor pigment. Oh my goodness, I could sing, what? Right, like seriously. And then I can go in and grab some of the saturated version of it off my palette. Now, this is the other reason why I would definitely have a water brush with me at all times, which I totally do. Um, I can, squeeze ink out of my feud um, pocket brush and use that as a black and white grayscale wash so I can drop it in. Okay, so I'm like, I'm telling you, these are essentials. Look at that, beautiful, awesome. Okay, let's go see what happens over here. Ooh. Uh, now, if you wanted to drop ink directly into a wet wash, I can drop some really cool ink washes in there. Wow, pretty neat, right? And because this is bristle, uh, a bristle brush, doesn't matter, you can always squeeze the ink and get it back down there again. Um, so, you know, touching it directly to the water won't affect it. Okay, so let's see if I ruined my beach landscape. Oh, I just add, it, it, it did a little bit of stuff over here, but let's see what we can do with this now. So just playing around, having fun with a sketchbook spread, just using three drawing utensils, doing a quick little, you know, beach landscape scene. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed my top five drawing utensils in the event that I was stranded on a deserted island. Check out the links below, there's all kinds of goodies. If you get on my newsletter, you get free stuff. Ooh, and if you could like and subscribe to my channel, then I can keep growing it and make you more art tips and tricks and uh, fun videos. <laughs> Lots of fun, oh my gosh. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you in the next video.